Hi and welcome to another how to play guide where we look at off meta champions and their laning phases and other key aspects of them that you probably aren't going to find anywhere else because no one else plays them. Okay, this is AD Fresh who has been my one trick, or at least I'd like to call him my one trick for about seven years since season three, has it really been that long? Maybe it has. Uh, in any case, I've been playing him since his release in season three as either a jungler or an AD champion and therefore I feel like I have a lot of experience to talk about and I'm still learning, so that's a great thing. If you'd like to learn with me, go ahead and subscribe and ring the notification bell to know when things come out. In this case, we're going to examine our laning phase versus Teemo. Is this Teemo particularly good? No, but we can still talk about the context of fighting our range champion and how we're going to use our abilities and our fleet footwork to do the best we possibly can. So, you can see in the bottom left there's fleet footwork uh, charging up with the Energize passive. This is going to work really well with the Shard, Storm Razor and Rapid Fire Cannon we buy later. And currently our starting item is Doe and Shield. Doe and Shield is going to give you the sustain you need to compete as long as you have Fleet Footwork as well. You can see that we're already out sustaining this Teemo uh, who's got his Corrupting Potion but he's going to chug that in a bit so that's going to change things. Uh, in any case, he gets level 2 first, kind of by my mistake, he doesn't really press the advantage. If we had level 2 we would. Let's put this down, we've seen the items already. Um... Actually, we might need to put that up for the CS. In any case, we do not want to be taking too much damage from Teemo early because he has grasped the Undying. This is a strategy that seems to be getting more and more popular with Teemo top players. And it's easy to see why. I believe it was popularized by one of the best Teemos in the game, like a challenger player or something. And it's really easy for him to apply it with his autos and get the sustain he needs because, again, Teemo is a champion that doesn't have sustain either. Kind of similar, only Teemo is a dick and Fresh isn't. Fresh is also a dick, let's be honest. Okay. Missing cannon means but that's fine. Let's look at how we're trading. So when we have 100, this means that we can get a uh, movement speed when we attack. Um, we'll get damage once we get uh, our items, but for now it's just movement speed and healing. So we can use it generically, just like any other uh, auto attack in order to sustain. Um, or we can try to use it against Teemo so we can hit him and then pull back. Uh, against someone with longer range than you, then no, Teemo, this can kind of not work, but as long as you do it, you won't get too much retaliation. Here, he also has some Qs, so we try to get him under the turret, but it's not going to be quite enough. Although we do manage to get a very favourable trade due to the caster minions and Fresh's raw damage as well. With Fleet for Work and Doran Shield, we are going to sustain it back, so not to worry. With it to push towards us, we're going to freeze the lane and apparently miss a minion, I think. Um... That's so things stay on this side. This puts Teemo in danger of ganks and get, makes it a lot easier for us to farm when we're close to our tower and we can always threaten with that. It doesn't matter if we don't actually wreck him under the tower, as long as we have the threat of that, we have an easier method of farming, especially because we're ranged. Anyway, we're very close to Teemo. We're going to go ahead and pop the ignite, hook him and hit him with all of our abilities. He's going to ignite his back and we don't even need to look at explosions when they're happening right behind us. Okay, so what let us win that fight? We had more health because we were sustaining more. We had the move speed. Let's look at it again, so I'm not talking at my ass here. Alright. A little bit further. Should probably use a league, um, what do you call it, that tool when I'm using replays. I think that lets you take camera angles. League director. Okay, so we're at 100. Use this last that minion. Gives us move speed. We do absolutely nothing with it. We take this cannon. He wanted to harass while we took the cannon minion. So we're like, okay. During his cast animation of his Q there, we're blind. But we just did a ton of damage. Look at my our health compared to his. We also have level advantage of level 5 versus level 4. Auto attacks are kind of wasted here, so why waste them when you can just walk up and press Q? We're going to drag him twice and then we're going to Q recast so we can auto attack as soon as we've done the recast. You can also do this without pulling him at all. Uh, don't know why I did that. Um, we were still blinded for that, so we do miss one auto, but then the Ignite is going to deal with the rest. So we can just Lantern off the rest of his Ignite and Poison, and then go back to using Fleet Work on the minions in order to get our uh, health back. And it's important that when you are auto attacking the minions constantly like this, and this goes for towers as well when you get Shard, um, to move in a straight line between each account, uh, between each attack. It can be different lines each time. You can move left, attack, right, attack, left, and so on. As long as you move in a straight line. If you just kind of dash dance left and right, left and right spamming, um, like you have having some kind of stroke, then you will get less overall movement and less energy charged into your shard, into your fleet footwork, and things like that. Fleet footwork is essential because it helps you move in for a trade, either by move speed 
or back away from a trade really quickly. And the sustain you get as well with the damage shield is going to be so much. Anyway, look at that. We, we fail Ultima because we did not plan it from the start of our little trade. We were just expecting to do a little tap to Teemo, not completely demolish him. So he could have died if we were smarter. We'll get into fresh combos in a bit when they come up. They could be in this video, could be in another video. Either way, there are plenty of fresh guides coming in this particular style where we look at things like laning phase, combos, and whatever. So be sure to um, watch them. He ends up flashing the a very, very um, particular angle of his flash. I think, you know, very, very scared of the hook so much that he could have just flashed in a slightly different way. Whatever. In any case, Teemo flashed. And again, he's not really sustaining. He's chugging his pots, but what's that going to do for him? We have much more sustain and we don't have to recall for it because Darren Shield and Fleetfoot work are really good. We start getting a bit greedy when we do miss him. So yes, let's put this down so we can see Teemo. So he comes a bit too close, so we give him an auto attack. Just because the Teemo might not be the best player doesn't mean that there's nothing to learn from this because people make mistakes all the time. He goes ahead as a bush. I do waste a bit of a ward here, but yeah, he, tr he tried to get one last CS before dying, I guess, so I respect that. Nothing too much about that one, but what I would like to highlight though is um, when you're moving around for your Energize, also consider that you are also boosting the power of your auto attack. We have BF Sword, and BF Sword is going to boost the power of our auto attack up to 200% at level 9, or le at level 5 play, um, which is going to be absolutely incredible. It still does a lot of damage over the 10 seconds that you're charging your auto attack and haven't been using one. Also, because we know we're going to kill him with an aut two autos and a flay, sorry, two autos and a uh, ignite, we can just flash from the bush. It's a cheesy tactic, but it works at high elo. If you don't believe me that it works at high elo, go check out a YouTuber called Balori. He does amazing uh, top lane videos where his method of winning games is simply to go full damage, ignite, and beat the crap out of the enemy top laner until, like, he wins again. Anyway. We have three kills, we've got a BF Sword, and now we have an advantage, so the lane is pretty much won. What can Teemo do at this point? Absolutely nothing. A little mistake there, I should have been moving side to side. Um, except I only have Fleet Footwork, so it's not that important. Let's wait till we get Storm Razor. Again, we're doing so much damage back to Teemo whenever he tries to hit us with the Blinding Dart, because if we auto the Teemo at the same time as he clicks Blinding Dart, our first auto is always going to go through, and we can use Fleet Footwork to back away after. Team is trying to bait us into shrooms he has set. That's fine, we just don't chase him that way. And we wait for him to make another mistake. He's choked his corrupting potions. He wants the uh, cannon minion. So when he's too busy trying to do that stuff, we fail our hook. Olaf comes in. And I believe I die here because uh, I could have flashed. I have flash up. Wait, no I don't. <laughs> no I don't. Either way, I die to Olaf because a bit greedy. But Volibear is going to be able to clean up the Olaf at the very least. And he's looking for the... Looking for the Teemo. But nothing yet. Teemo's a little bit too fast. So, that's one death. And that's the only death we're going to get. In this game, we also have Shogaf and Vagar bot lane. And Vagar always wanting to surrender, by the way. So, for the build we're taking is Storm Racer first. And followed by Rapid Fire Cannon, as usual... Uh, for the AD Fresh build. You can find out more about the AD Fresh build if you check out the guide. It'll be in the top right, the description. Uh, there's a mobile fire guide and a very good video guide that I hope you check out, although the support section of it might be a little bit outdated, which I address in the comments. Anyway, um, after that, we're going to go straight into more damage, like Infinity Edge and Essence Reaver, because we need to replace the AD carry that we don't have. Uh, fresh AD carry is an amazing build, but in lane, it tends to suck. So if I get the opportunity to play that, because we essentially have a tank bot lane in the form of Shoga for some reason, then it is a brilliant uh, time for me to start playing AD Carry Fresh since we're fed and since good things are happening. You usually need a particular support and a particular matchup to be able to pull off AD Fresh reliably. So he's able to get away from our box because we fail our combo, and that's fine. What he does then is stand still for some reason, so we're able to just say, okay, put on the Ignite, he's Omaiwa Mo Shinde Lu. Tower plating is running out. Let's try to squeeze that one last tower plating. Bam, got it. And we're going to try and take the tower. Not going to get the final tower plating, but we do get the tower. 
you can see that I was moving around the turret, that's so we could charge up our Storm Razor. Our Storm Razor does tons of damage, so what you want to do in the lane, as you might have seen, is that when you reach 100 whilst you're hitting minions, you're going to want to go ahead and exhaust that 100 stacks you've got by attacking someone. See the damage we just did on him? He did not see that coming. Now there's two more here. We're going to flay both of them. Zaya dodges it. We try to dodge uh, Zaya's ultimate E combo. But because she dodges it, we get Olaf instead with the hook. And that means Olaf dies. Zed comes in for that, <laughs> I guess, kill seal, but who cares? Uh, we're 6-1. Team is able to push the lane, but it's okay. We're just going to focus on the dragon. We've already gotten his turret, and we'll probably get more with everything else going on here. That's why I'm pushing mid. Zed goes to deal with Teemo, and succeeds, actually. So we didn't have to worry about that in the first place. With the Energize passive and the Fleet Footwork, we're easily able to make very damaging attacks using the Energize stacks that we've built, and then using Fleet Footwork to get away before anyone can really follow up. With Rapid Fire Cannon's range, which is the next item we're going to get, uh, we can do this even safer. Storm Racer having the slow as well will also prevent enemies, especially melee enemies, from catching up to you. So let's say uh, this is demonstrated in the game versus Set at some point. Definitely will record that one. Unless I've already gotten mid, but oh well, whatever. Um, let's say if you hit a melee, um, the Fleet Footwork will give you move speed to evade him, and the Storm Razor will slow him, that's so he can't chase you. With Rapid Fire Cannon, you also get insane range, that's so it's basically free poke. Unless they have a double dash. Be wary of that. <laughs> so we get our uh, next BF Sword. We don't go for Double Cloak of Agility anymore because it has been nerfed a few months ago now. Get the big damage on set. We try to um, box flay here. Miss the hook. That is generally just you to aim. I, I anticipated that he would try to um, dodge it, genuinely. I know that's what I tried to do. Enemies are taking Herald, so we're just going to go ahead and take um, Olaf. I do cook uh, Shogaf out of his um, thing here. The Sunfire from Volley Bear does reveal uh, the location of Teemo, so we're able to just sit there and then take him. When he realises he's going to die, he tries to make a run for it, but that's not going to be enough. We catch him and kill him. Okay, these two are alive. We're going to try to do some damage. We are already AD carry, remember? Just going to focus on what we can hit. So when they are focusing on Volley Bear, we can try to do other things. Since their attention was uh, divi divided, I should say, um, and we were able to push the Khan back a bit, we were able to lantern Volley Bear out there, and everyone lived happily ever after until the next team fight, at least. So, we'll take Krugs as well. Souls are still glorious. Even if we're not playing on hit, souls will increase your damage by one, which hopefully gets you closer to your one shot dream. Um, which, let's be honest, the one shot dream isn't actually real. You're more likely going to be having a two shot dream. Anyway, we have our Berserker's Greaves. Why Berserker's Greaves? Even though you're going to one-shot them, because you're not going to one-shot them. You're going to two-shot them. That's why you need Berserker's Greaves, and people are going to, some people are going to be 10-shot, you know? Maybe you want to get your 10 shots a bit faster. Uh, I used to recommend Sorcerer's Shoes, but that was literally for the dream of the one-shot, which you're never going to achieve unless someone is incredibly underfair. That's just the uh, harsh reality, but if you want to achieve the uh, one-shot dream, take Predator, because Dark Harvest is a two-shot dream, and go 100% full AD with two Infinity Edges. You can take your infin yeah, two Infinity Edges, Rapid Fire Cannon, and the Storm Razor, and you might be able to achieve the uh, one-shot dream. For the last item, go like a, I don't know, a Dusk Blade or something, or a third Infinity Edge, or a Bloodfester. Bloodfester also has AD scaling, so that's why that would work. In any case, we have four people top. Shogaf's coming in, he's our AD carry slash tank guy. Um, and we also get the nice catch on Azaya. I'd like to show you this catch, actually, because I remember it. It was completely intentional. So they, they are pushing forward and we're backing off, okay? We're backing off. Olaf is going to take some focus. He's going to take tower focus. Now I'm going to back off like this. Lantern to Valley Bear. This looks like we're running away and giving up tower, right? Sorry, let me say that again. I might have been a bit weird on the mic. It looks like we're backing away. We're going to Lantern Volley Bear out and come out safe. Give them the tower. But actually, we Q. But what's this Q going to hit? No one's in range. Zaya's certainly not in range. We're just going to hit this minion here. Look at how Zaya's already started walking forward because it looks like we're running away. Move in. She's in range for the flight. Hasn't even realized it yet. Box. Doesn't hit. <laughs> She's going to get flipped into the box. Take a tower shot. Deal our burst as well. 
And then after that, uh, Rakan in his Rage of his Lost Lover is also going to end as well. I'm going to recall rather than chase. Um, they know that. That's fine. We're going to go bot lane to get some more farm because farming is important for an AD carry. Remember, I'm the AD carry now. Uh, we've got a Cloak of Agility going into Infinity Edge. You can also go for Essence Reaver if you want the CDR instead, meaning more lanterns. So let's say you're, you're a backline and your team just can't help but int. Maybe more CDR for your um, lantern might save some of them. Anyway, Infinity Edge is finished and the game is near the end, so we're not going to reach full build. I do have a uh, short video about a full build uh, AD Fresh and what that looks like, which is a lost game, but still, it's really fun to see a full build Fresh. The cool thing about um, AD Fresh as well is that when you have lots of souls, you have lots of armor, so you're more durable than most AD carries, actually, um, in terms of actual durability, not things like lifesteal. Although, definitely, um, since you don't build lifesteal because you want to rush your crit items as much as possible, um, really important that you take Legend Bloodline. Um, if you're AD fresh anyway, like full AD, uh, you won't need Legend Tenacity because you won't be getting caught. If you get caught, you're already dead. Uh, that's just the, uh, what happens when you're squishy. Okay, enemies coming in. Let's see what happens. Hook onto Zaya. I'm not going to double Q because I don't want to get bodied by Scepter. Did you see that damage, though? I, I know, I know. We see fresh AD damage a lot of the times on this channel. Let's just see that again because it was really uh, awkwardly cut out. So, hook. We can already see set coming for us. So, we're just saying max range. Indicated by the rapid fire ca uh, cannon indicator when you own the item. But then we flash before set can absolutely body me because set has the capability of doing a lot of damage. He hasn't actually built much, so maybe we don't have to be that scared. By staying on the edge of it, the range, we're going to be able to avoid his E. And then he's going to ult Volley Bear to try to smack into Volley Bear. I mean, into Vagar, but that's not going to quite work. Big Shield coming through, so that's going to sidestep that. Not take the true damage. We're still doing the DPS that we can. We can take some liberties because we're a bit tankier than your average AD carry. And we can go for that focus on set whilst they're still distracted. We're going to Q. This is another mechanic. I've talked about this in another one, but let's keep talking about it. I call it a mechanic. Um... I don't want to refer to myself as high level, because technically I'm not. But I suppose it is a higher level technique. Whatever. Who cares? Anyway. So, Rakan's going to come in, and he's going to use his knockup. Now, just before the knockup starts, you can see I've started my Q animation. So, what this means is that the cast time of Q does not get interrupted by this uh, knockup. Q is not interrupted by stuns or knockups. God, that volley bear is permanent, is he? It's on a loop. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, anyway, so we started Q animation whilst he's knocked us up. That means essentially we're not wasting the time he spent knocking us up, right? This would be the same with stuns and all that. And we are able to knock Olaf under tower and do lots of damage to him. You can see this is why we got the Berserker's Greaves as well. For some reason, he uses his Zonia's effect here. And that allows us to easy catch up. We would have caught course up anyway because of um, Volley Bear Q. Zaya was just trying to have some fun with the dragon and use it to lifesteal. Whilst Volley Bear focuses on the dragon, I'm going to... Oh, we got to look at that. It's not a full charge. You can see in the bottom left, it's not going to be a full charge. Is it a full charge? Oh, oh, it's a full charge. Bam. She's almost dead. She popped heal. She was on one HP. And then uh, using the move speed from our items, we were able to just catch up. Because she doesn't have Zeal or anything, so she doesn't have bonus move speed. And we were able to take that. Now we have Infernal Soul. Now we do even more damage on our auto. One of the best things that you can have as AD Fresh is an enemy center, by the way. Um, if you're able to get the quest against an enemy center, you can achieve 100% crits without even enough items. Anyway, I'm talking over the game ending. The enemy surrender of that, because that's just such a display of power. And for some reason, when AD Fresh gets fed, or top lane Fresh gets fed, the lane responsible gets flamed to high hell sometimes, and usually that's enough <laughs> to actually cause them to surrender. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Uh, this was a fun game, and I tried to analyse a bit more than I normally would in a replay commentary. That's why it's called How to Play Fresh. And once again, just to reiterate, this is going to be a, I guess, a series. We're going to do this again, uh, maybe with some other champions as well, on how to play those off-meta champions that aren't usually played, but you might be slightly interested in. Lots of people might be interested in AD Fresh. For example, people that want to one-trick him because they main him support, but they want they just want to play Fresh. So when they're also filled top lane, I know, right? Um, they can play AD Fresh or something like that without feeling 
like they don't know what they're doing. If that's your kind of situation, or you just want to play something different or something more relaxing, then this is the kind of video for you. If you want to scale to Diamond Elo as fast as possible, maybe not. There are easier champions to learn, better champions to learn to get Diamond Elo, and I know that me getting Diamond Elo would not be an easy task with Fresh Top, as it would be with some other champions. Not saying it can't be done, because people have proved time and time again that all sorts of things can make it into Diamond and above, so I will never say anything like that, but I'm not going to say it will make it easy for you. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube blah blah blah, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.